Hey everyone, in this video I've got one spectacular growth stock you can buy that's down 85% off the high. I'm going to discuss what the growth stock is, why I like it so much and why it's such a great value right now. So without further ado, let's jump into the details. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so the growth stock I am recommending in this video is Chewy, the online pet retailer. The stock price is down 85% off the high, and I think it's an incredible value right now. In fact, I have Chewy ranked in my top 24 stocks to buy for 2024. And let's see why I like this stock so much. Starting with the fact that the company's grown revenue very nicely over the last five years, growing to 11 billion in revenue, up from a little under 5 billion in revenue in 2019. One difficulty, one challenge that Chewy has faced here in late 2023 and early 2024 is declining or decreasing customer growth. Now, early in 2020 and 2021, when people were spending more time at home, shopping online more often, Chewy experienced a boom in customer growth. Now that customer growth has slowed down as economies have reopened, that's understandable. But what's also hurting Chewy is that the customers that joined in 2020 and 2021, some of them are no longer customers, right? Every business goes through this where when you attract 100 customers this year, next year, not all of them remain. The best companies keep more than 90% of their customers. A company like Costco has a more than 90% customer retention rate. Chewy hasn't given us their customer retention rate, but we can guess that it's not as high as Costco. Very few companies are as high as Costco. And so you experience that customer churn. And when your cohort of customers that you added are much larger in certain years, like in 2020 and 2021, those customers that are churning are larger than the new customers you're adding in the current year. And that's the difficulty Chewy is facing and will likely continue to face in 2024. Still, I think management has done a good job managing this business, both in and out of the pandemic. It's not an easy thing to do to experience that kind of disruption, the unprecedented disruption in your business, both in the boom and in the reopening economy. And I've thought that Chewy's management team has done a good job. And you can see that with the economies in scale. Economies in scale is one of the most desirable characteristics you can find in an investment. In the example I have created here, sales grow from 100 in year one to $115.76 in year four, while net income more than doubles from $4.50 to $9.47 in year four. This company demonstrates economies in scale. As its revenue grows, its profits grow by a larger magnitude. Not every company can achieve this kind of effective growth. Here's how it works. This is a typical categorization of an income statement of a publicly traded company. Cost of goods sold is what's called a variable expense. That means cost of goods sold is connected to sales. Other expenses like interest, general and admin, and depreciation are not connected to sales. You can see here depreciation stays the same at 25, whether sales increase or not. The same is true for interest expense. It stays the same whether sales grows or not. You can understand your interest payments do not increase when your sales increase. Overall, businesses typically have a mixture of fixed expenses that are unrelated to sales and variable expenses that are. When sales increase, the business leverages those fixed expenses, as we see in this example, and profits grow by a larger magnitude than the increase in sales. All right, so now you know why that's important. Look at Chewy's operating profit margin. In early 2019, it was negative 6%, and they've slowly, nicely increased that to positive 0.11% in the last five years. They've done a good job demonstrating those economies in scale, which we know now is so important. Cash flow from operations. Cash flow from operations is one of the most vital metrics I consider when making an investment decision. If any financial shenanigans are happening, 
looking at this metric can help uncover the fraud. Moreover, looking at profitability without considering cash flow from operations can lead to a misleading picture of a company's performance. For instance, look at the example I have created here. The company reported a net loss of $250. However, when you look at the cash flow from operations, it was a gain of $35. How can that be? Well, two expenses a company must report on the income statement are depreciation and stock-based compensation. Importantly, these are non-cash expenses. Money is not leaving the company for these expenses. In the case of depreciation, when a company buys a machine for $750, it pays all of that price up front. However, generally accepted accounting principles require that the company take the expense over a period the machine is expected to operate. So if the machine is expected to last for 10 years, the annual expense will be $75 per year for 10 years, even though the company paid the $750 cash at the time of the purchase. Also, when a company offers its employees a stock option, it's not parting with cash. However, it must record the cash value of the option as an expense on the income statement. So moving on to the working capital items, inventory management is the easiest way a company can increase cash flow. The simplest case is when a business has 100 inventory units, sells 30 units, and doesn't replace those units. The decision would reduce total inventory and increase cash flow. As you might already be thinking, this isn't sustainable. Eventually, the company will deplete all its inventory and go out of business. Accounts payable is the money that a company owes another company and has not paid yet. And accounts receivable is the opposite. A company can increase its cash flow by collecting payments faster and paying suppliers slower. If done with skill, companies at scale can take advantage of these timing differences to boost cash flow by a couple of percent annually. Costco is one example that employs this strategy masterfully. Overall, if you observe cash flow increasing unsustainably, you should expect a reversal of that trend. The other big risk to consider is if you see a company reporting substantial profits, but negative or weak cash flow due to rising accounts receivable. All right, so now you've learned about another importantly vital financial metric, and you can see in this metric as well, Chewy demonstrating, I'm sorry, very nice upward momentum as well from negative 1% in 2019, all the way up to 4.43% in the most recent trailing 12 month period. The company is achieving this through a combination of larger scale, better negotiating power with suppliers, improvements in its warehouses, automating some warehouse facilities, better logistics, getting closer to customers, getting more information on their customers. A unique fact about Chewy is that more than 70% of their purchases on their website are for recurring orders. And that makes sense, right? For a company that's selling pet goods, people subscribe to the food that their favorite pet likes, and they put it on automatic repeat, like once every month or once every two weeks, whatever the case might be, everything their pet needs on a recurring basis, they subscribe to it on Chewy and they get it delivered on a monthly basis or weekly basis, whatever they, that might be. That fact is similar to the subscribe and save feature that Amazon offers, but Chewy does it for pets and they're focused on pets and they attract customers because that unique customization they provide for pet owners, they get to know the pet owners, you can create pet profiles, and some services they offer uniquely for pet owners makes it so that some customers prefer going to Chewy instead of going to Amazon. Because you're thinking, why not just go to Amazon to buy your pet food? Well, there's some that go to Chewy and Amazon is so large, they might not be able to offer that unique customer experience for those few customers they have that are there for, to buy pet goods. And so Chewy is more focused on the pet owner, the pet parent, and they've done a good job attracting some customers because of that. All right, for fiscal year 2024, 
investors expect Chewy's earnings per share to increase from negative two cents in fiscal year 2023 up to 13 cents in fiscal year 2024, which ends January of 2025. And then for that earnings per share to nearly triple in fiscal year 2025 to 38 cents per share. So phenomenal earnings growth expected here from Chewy over the next two years. That's one of the reasons why I'm really attracted to the stock as well. And finally, the stock is relatively cheap. It's trading at a forward price to earnings of 19.95. That's the cheapest this stock has been going back all the way to early 2021. Investors have scarcely had an opportunity to buy this stock at this valuation. And arguably, the business is in much better shape now than it was in 2023 and in 2022 and in 2021 because it's in the positive territory in operating profitability. Its cash flow from operations has improved significantly and the challenges it was experiencing with labor and inflation have all moderated. So all of that is working in its favor. It just has that customer growth problem right now because of the churn from the accounts in 2020 and 2021. So all of that considered, I think this is a favorable risk versus reward profile for investors. And I've rated it as an excellent stock to buy and is in my list of top 24 stocks to buy in 2024. Thank you for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I know there's a lot you could be doing with your time and a lot of other videos you could be watching. So I truly appreciate that you chose to watch this one. If you want to see more videos just like this, hit the subscribe or the like button. They'll both help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you again.